What's up, everybody? Um, first, for you guys at home who may not know me, uh, there's two Jacks in our grade. Um, I'm the Jack with the long hair, and uh, the other Jack is known for a different physical attribute. Um, I want to start uh, by addressing the elephant in the room. Um, my people talk to Eileen's people. Um, we came to a very generous financial agreement, uh, and the beef that we are all very sorry that you had to witness publicly is finally over. Um, on to my chapel talk. Uh, like most seniors who come up here, I signed up without really knowing what this was going to be about. Uh, to be honest, I'm still not really sure. Uh, when I started writing this, I decided to try to find inspiration in those that have come before me. Uh, so I did a little analysis of previous chapel talks, and here's what I found. Um, there are three types of chapel talks that we get here, and I have a little Venn diagram. Uh, the first I'll call the Marcos, because Marcos uh, gave one like this about a month ago. They're usually moving, honest, uh, they're heartfelt. Uh, students who give these talks have uh, unique and inspiring stories. I'm not one of those students. Um, I have a feeling this talk won't leave you very inspired. Uh, the next are the nemesis to bro slash sis. Uh, these are the talks where two best friends go up and they talk about how they used to be enemies. Uh, these are always fun chapel talks. Uh, there's at least one a year. They're fun, they're cute, they're, they have just enough emotion to stick with you. Um, I suppose I had this experience with my roommate. We never really talked about it and I didn't clear this with him, uh, so we might be in for an awkward discussion pretty soon. <laughs> Um, but my talk isn't about this because Anya and Elizabeth secured their spot on the chapel talk schedule before I did, and uh, uh, sorry, and uh, God forbid you wear the same dress twice. Um, the last is the metamorphosis. These are the most common. They're about how someone has changed during their time at Brooks. I like these ones because they help me with my own insecurities. I feel a little better about myself when I learn that no one else has anything figured out either. I've changed a lot since freshman year. I used to really want to be on the varsity hockey team. Uh, now, not so much. Uh, freshman year, I was five foot nine. Now I'm six foot, unless someone around me is actually six foot, in which case I'm five ten. <laughs> Tinder, I'm six foot. It's okay. As you can see from the, <laughs> as you can see from the Venn diagram, there's some overlap between these speeches. These are the special ones we get. Marty Graham, Bizzle, Spencer Purse come to mind. Um, and then there's a special golden area in the middle. Besides a good message, these speeches are delivered with sincerity, with grace, with compassion. I use the Dave Price statistical analysis method to find what speeches fall into this category. Interestingly enough, only the Gettysburg Address. <laughs> if I had to categorize my talk so far, it'd be somewhere over here. Now I want to talk about some of my favorite parts of Brooks and also some areas that need improvement. Uh, my favorite parts, all right, now some areas that need improvement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the clubs, first of all. Uh, freshman year, I signed up for so many clubs. There was the construction club, which claimed to be interested in the construction of the new art center. Uh, they bribed me with the promise of a free hard hat. I joined the SNL club, which I suppose was a predecessor to Good Looks Brooks, and uh, that claimed to sketch host, it claimed to host sketch comedy nights. The last was Club Kyo, led by the Kim brothers, which aimed to promote filial piety and helping our elders. In total, I went to one club meeting that year. I will say things are getting better. Affinity groups, Wink, and the Hammock Club all meet regularly, I think. Um, Ali Kim is working on a solution uh, with School Piazza which I think attempts to give clubs an easier way to organize and communicate. Also, it's an auctioneering website, uh, and it keeps you updated on promposals. It's a real jack of all trades. In all honesty, I don't really understand it, but I'm leaving in a few weeks, so who cares? I also think the observatory needs, op needs to be opened. Uh, I was told when I, toured, when I toured here that it was used by science classes and during winter term. That's a lie. Uh, but I throw that into my tour sometimes because, you know, you got to win kids over from Gov somehow, so. Uh, also, our class never got permission to visit dorms of the other gender. Uh, in the fall of our freshman year, Mr. Waters told us that we'd get it in the winter. Uh, in the winter, he told us sophomore year. Sophomore year, I guess everyone forgot, but I remembered when I was writing this, so now I'm mad about it. <laughs> um, that's about it. And to be honest, there's a lot more to love about Brooks than there is to hate. 
The speech is pretty cynical and that's unfair to the school. I really have loved my four years here. I love my friends. I love my dorm. I have teachers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love all my teachers. No worries. <laughs> um, I've been able to travel the world through books. I've played new sports. I've tried art. I became an avid fantasy football fan. I found a go-to Chinese restaurant in Boston. And although it's cliche, I do think our community is special. I can say hi to anyone I see on Main Street and they'll say hi back. I can come up here and talk about nothing and not get booed off the stage. In fact, this is the type of community where I can go up to the headmaster and say, hey, John, looks like the weather's pretty nice this week. And he'll respond, that's true, Jack. It's beautiful. I am ever amazed by the beauty of this campus. <laughs> Uh, and then I can say, the kids have been working really hard, too. They're pretty tired. And he'll say, another good point, Jack. I'm so inspired by the tenacity of the student body, especially the class of 2021. And I'll say, I think maybe a head's holiday is in order. And he'll say, hmm. <laughs> I do have some lessons in my talk, because is any chapel talk really complete without them? You guys can judge whether or not these lessons add up to the most important educational experience of my life, but uh, here they are. One, if you volunteer to answer questions you know, you can, success, you can successfully pretend to know enough Spanish to meet the graduation requirements. Two, it's a lot more fun to be bad at a sport than good at it. Three, if you're learning to unicycle, wear a cup. Starting off is a struggle. <laughs> Man, it's just great morals here. Four. If you have a friend group full of betas, it's impossible to decide on anything. You spend most of your time thinking about making plans, but not actually making them. And sometimes it's not the worst thing in the world. Five, never ever order from China Blossom. Six, uh, with a lot of posters and very, very dark lighting, any dorm room can look clean. After the lesson comes some sort of morals usually in a chapel talk, uh, something that the school can connect with. Like I said, I don't really have one. Um, so instead, I'm just going to conclude the speech with some thanks. Uh, thank you to the admissions office for accepting me. Uh, thank you to my school for having confidence in my abilities, for letting me try new things, for letting me fail, and for letting me learn. Thank you, Mr. Chapman, for letting me come up here. Uh, thank you to my friends for being my friends. And uh, thank you for listening.